educational leaders in a multicultural society and Dr. Abul Petrie. In chapter four, you talk about educational leaders who serve historically underserved populations. How can you elaborate on some of the ethical barriers that they may face and how they may move their school forward in working with these populations? Well, some of the ethical barriers that they face, uh, we start with number one, high stakes testing. And what happens in high stakes testing, a lot of the uh, writers like Robert Starrock talks about high stakes testing as being inauthentic learning. And so what that does is it creates a situation where you have these high accountability measures in, in place for schools, and particularly you know, historically underserved student populations that really amounts to a lot of monitoring. And as, as, as educational leaders begin to monitor, Sometimes it becomes very punitive, but the ethical issue is high stakes testing. You know, and, and does high stakes testing really uh, matter in terms of educating people? Uh, the second barrier could be something as simple as uh, the time school starts. You know, there's some schools, for example, if you look at some of the more elite schools, uh, for children, school time will start at 9 o'clock. And then if you look at some of the working class schools that Gene Eichmann defines, school could start as early as 7.15. So imagine now a child at five and six years old to be at the bus stop for 6.30 and travel 30 minutes to get to the classroom at 7.15. That's an ethical issue. Even though, even though you have a policy that says school starts at 7.15, it's an ethical issue. And the question becomes, how do educational leaders challenge these unethical policies, these unethical practices that really stifle student interest in school? And so as educational leaders, it becomes very imperative that we begin to think about the challenges, not just go in schools and assume that, okay, all these things are in place and that we have to accept things as they are. We need to recognize those things and then we need to begin to plan how we're gonna address those unethical things that are, you know, taken away from the educational process. You mentioned Robert Sturrack, and he did a lot of work with three components of ethical behaviors. Presence, responsibility, and authenticity. What do these three things mean for educational leaders? Well, when you look at authenticity, uh, you know, there's, there's a whole uh, notion in terms of educational leaders that some would contend that educational leaders assume positions um, but would question their authenticity in terms of, of, of leadership. You know, are you leading uh, in the best interest of students? Did you assume a leadership role primarily because it was a step out of the classroom and it was a, a, a higher pay grade? So when you look at authenticity uh, for leadership, I think it's, a, again, a, around an ethical component. And if you assume uh, the role of a school leader, or an educational leader, then one of the components is that you're going to have the challenge of looking at policies, looking at issues that other people have not really examined or critiqued in a way that it would offer the best opportunity for students and communities and teachers. Very good. Thank you.